Now we come to the next ayah. يَوْمَ يَكُونُ النَّاسُ كَالْفَرَاشِ الْمَبْثُوثِ Allah says the day on which people are going to be كَالْفَرَاشِ الْمَبْثُوثِ Farash are moths. Moths. It's also the bugs that are, you know when you turn a light on, these little tiny bugs trying to hit the light, and they're going in every direction. Those, those are farash. The plural of farasha actually in Arabic. Okay? These bugs, Allah says people will be like farash. These little tiny bugs going in every which direction, these moths. Al-mabthuth. <coughs> this is the adjective given to them. Dispersed, spread out. Now farash by itself is spread out. But he made it even more spread out by the word al-mabthuth. And this parallel is being given to people. This scene, is this an individual scene or a collective scene? This is a collective scene, so the word nas is more appropriate. The word nas is here, more suited. Okay. Now, batha to be widespread. Now, what are the benefits of using this, uh, uh, this image, al-farash al-mabthuth, with people on the Day of Judgment? First of all, there's, there's many, 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 there are countless bugs, there are countless insects, insects going in every which direction. Then there's chaos in them. They're not moving in one direction or another direction, they're going in every which direction, and they're even running into each other. They're even running into each other. And so by using this parallel of us with al-farash al-mabthuth, Allah is describing the chaos we're going to look like on the Day of Judgment. This is what's going to happen. In other words, when that rattling sound happens, you will be so wrecked, you will be so shocked, that this is what's going to happen to all of you. يَوْمَ يَكُونُ النَّاسُ كَالْفَرَاشِ الْمَبْثُوثِ قِيلَ شُبِّهَ النَّاسُ عِنْدَ الْبَعْثِ بِالْفَرَاشِ لِأَنَّ الْفَرَاشِ إِذَا ثَارَ لَمْ يَتَّجِهْ إِلَى جِهَةٍ وَاحِدَةٍ it said that people will be people are given uh, or alluded to by making a, a reference to these moths that are scattered in every direction because when they move they don't move in one direction like birds that move in a flock and they go in one direction as opposed to them وَكَذَلِكَ النَّاسِ إِذَا خَرَجُوا مِنْ قُبُورِهِمْ أَحَاطَ بِهِمُ الْفَزْعَ and just like that, and additionally when people come out of their graves for, uh, they will be overwhelmed by terror just like these bugs that there, it's an image of chaos when you see all that motion happening at the same time it's an image of chaos and dis- disturbance فَتَوَجَّهُ جِهَاتٍ شَتَّى أَوْ تَوَجَّهُ إِلَى مَنَازِلِهِمُ الْمُخْتَلِفَةِ سُعَادَ وَشِقَى uh, what he's saying is that they're going to be going in every which direction and eventually end up in one of two, the direction of happiness or the direction of calamity and, uh, and sadness. وَالْمَبْثُوثُ مِنَ الْبَثْ وَهُوَ التَّفْرِيقُ And مبثوث, the word مبثوث, which is an ism مفعول, an objective noun, comes from the word بَثْ and it means division, distinction. So they'll be separated from one another. Even though they're together, they're also separated. Which is a, a, an incredible thing. That on the Day of Judgment, we will be the biggest gathering ever of human beings. All generations of human beings are coming together at one point. And yet, this will be the day you will feel the loneliest. You will be the most alone. You will be separated from everybody else. And this is described in further more explicit detail. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ Right in Surah Al-Mu'arijim وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِيهِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُؤْوِيهِ Right, so ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ Right, he, he offers Allah everybody. He even says, separate me from my tribe in addition to my family. How about this? Why don't you take everyone on earth into hell? Let me go. He'll offer everybody else. Right? وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ give, give everybody else up, just let me survive. That's what he's concerned about. So you become completely individualized on that day. وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَلْعِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ and mountains will become on that day like al-ihn. Al-ihn in the Arabic language is wool of different textures. So when Allah makes reference to this kind of carding, usually it's associated with cotton, but in Arab society, the first thing that came to their mind was wool. So al-ihn is used wool. And then Allah uses the word al-manfush. The word nafasha in Arabic is to card and scrape into fine lines. You know when you card and scrape the wool, it becomes fine fibers? And then they're brought together and intertwined. And al ihn is used for, for wool that is of multiple textures. And when you're carding, you know what happens? These really fine fibers, they start flying up into the air. They become weightless and there's this, you know, so you have to wear some court sign, I think, because you're going to get like, it's the dust of it is going to go in your, you know, kind of like sawdust kind of thing. But this happens with wool a lot. So Allah is describing mountains as this weightless thing that when it's scraped, it's almost like it's flying in the air. And the different textures of it implied inside the word al ihn benefits us in that mountains are of different colors. But they're going to be slammed together and scraped together to the point where first of all, there's this different colored textured dust coming out of them, just like wool, when they're scraped together, subhanAllah. 
And, and so we're, and we're, being, we're learning that mountains will not stay in, in one place. Because the mountainous region of one place is of one color, and the mountainous region of another place is a different color, but now they're all slamming into each other, they're making moves towards each other, subhanAllah. So, وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُكَ لِأَحْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ Now we get to the final part. And as for the one whose scales, I'm roughly translating, uh, as for the one whose scales became heavy. You know what's incredible about that? An ayah ago, mountains became weightless. And now what's becoming heavy? The scales. It's a beautiful contrast. It's inc- incredible. This is a day when everything's changed. You know, in, in this dunya right now, when you do, do good deeds, everybody around you says this is worthless. There's no weight to it. And when they see a mountain, the first thing to their mind is, this is solid. Because their vision is that of what they can see. They accept. What they cannot see, they don't accept. But on the Day of Judgment, Allah Azza wa reverses this. And so the mountains become weightless, and your deeds are now heavy. They've been given. ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينَ What an amazing contrast in this surah. Then he says, okay, so if the deeds become heavy, فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ Then he will be in عِيشَةٍ Isha is different from Hayat. In the you know, English translation, Isha, Hayat translated as life. Okay? Uh, Isha comes from Aish. Aish in Arabic. Which means to have a life in which you have no worry of food and shelter. Okay? Any life is Hayat. A khas minhu, Isha. Isha, there, there's no worry about food and shelter, meaning the necessities of your life are not a concern for you at all. Then you are in Aish. Those of you who speak Arabic, or, or Urdu rather, Aish kar rahe. Right? You know what that means? Oh, we're living it up. No worries. Right? That's, it's kind of derived from there. But the Arabic meaning originally is, is exactly that. It's to have a, a life free of concern. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ Then there's the word رَاضِيَةٍ The word رَاضِيَةٍ literally means the one who is pleased. Literally it means the one who is pleased. So as an adjective of عِيشَةٍ it's, it's actually unique. A life that is pleased. Hmm. A life full... Full of pleasure, that ribbon, which is how some of us have interpreted it, is correct. A life that is full of contentment. But in the Quran, in Arabic rhetoric, you can say, you know, uh, 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 an overjoyed life. You didn't describe the person; you described the life, right? You didn't describe the person, but you described the life. And this is so to understand that this, the entire life, not a moment, not a breath, will go by where the joy won't be there. Not where the joy will be missing, where the contentment will be missing. There will not be a moment of boredom or, or of, you know, of dissatisfaction. So, عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ ذَاتِ رِضًا As for example, Al-Alusi rahimahullah says. So, now we come to the, the, the horrifying next ayah. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ